Hey you, welcome to Sunday Explorers today. Let's learn from the one who died for our sins and rose again. Jesus Christ turned water into wine, taught the people like you and I. He fed over five thousand and healed the sick. Hey you, welcome to Sunday Explorers today. Well, it's good to see you. It's good you come on. I'm glad you've turned. That's really good. Yeah. Um, because you've sort of just turned it, would you like to pick the first one? I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. If you follow me. If you follow me. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. Very good. So we'll take some time to pray. You can do the prayer bit on your seat. Father, we thank you that we can take time to pray, and we thank you that you hear us when we pray, and uh, we just pray for everybody who's here today. Think of all the children, uh, and uh, we think how much you love them, and we just pray they may realise that uh, while they're young, and realise that your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, he, he loves them too. We'll learn more about him later if we want to learn about your son, Lord Jesus. So we thank you for him and his time together in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So maybe it's time for the uh, verse now. I think, uh, can we get thanks? Flora? We're going to the bench then. Flora? Yes, we're going to the bench then. We did, did a really good job last week with the old memory verse. And this week we're going to continue with the new memory verse, okay? Now it goes, be strong and of a good courage. And then we've got a new bit here, do not be afraid, okay? So it goes, be strong and of a good courage. Do you think we can say that together a few times? Okay. Right, girls, you're going to try and say it with me, okay? Be strong and of a good courage. We're going to say it together. Be strong and of good courage. Again, be strong and of good courage. Again, be strong and of good courage. Well, when Mark last week was asking us about this one, when it says be strong, does it mean that we all need to do weightlifting and we all need to get really ripped? <laughs> huh? No, what does it mean? That is perfect. I don't think I could give a better how many English you that. Maybe you could say something clever as well. <laughs> yeah, be strong and have a good courage. It doesn't mean get really strong. It means be like what you said, Hannah. Be brave. It means be be strong. Be 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 be. Don't be afraid. Okay. So we'll say that one more time, and then we'll add the new bit. Together. Be strong and of good courage. And then this next bit, we're just going to say this own a few times. It says, Do not be afraid. That's what it says. Do not be afraid. We'll say it together a few times now. Do not be afraid. And again. Do not be afraid. Two more times. One more. Do not be afraid. Last time. Do not be afraid. We know what that means, don't we? It means don't be scared. All, will we say it all together now? All say it together? Can we do that? Yeah. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. One more time. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Yeah. <coughs> right, 
it's well done for living in memory verse. I know it's a new one, but uh, uh, this part here of not being afraid, we're going to think about that a little bit today because somebody who uh, we've been learning about the Lord Jesus at various points in, on, in his life on this road that he was on, he had to not be afraid because he was going through some really difficult and challenging things. At, at first, uh, you know, we've been, we learned about him at the start of the year and he, you know, he had his mum and dad with him. He, he was looked after, I'm sure, by them. But it starts to get harder and harder as he gets older. And this last bit, we're doing it in a long section because it's so important that we understand everything that he went through. But we've come to the point now, kids, when the Lord Jesus uh, well, the story today is the crowd's choice. So, the Lord Jesus is there before uh, the governor, before Pontius Pilate, and Callum said that, um, you know, he, was, he said to the Lord Jesus, these people are saying that, you know, you, you've done something wrong. And they're saying that you're claiming to be the Son of God. That, and that they basically didn't agree with that because they, they were jealous of him. And then uh, Pontius Pilate said to the Lord Jesus, what do you have to say about that? And all these people were shouting around and said, what do you have to say about that? And the Lord Jesus said, what you've just said is as you say it, basically. Um, you're the one saying it, and you basically agreed with what they were saying, in so, in, in so many words. And the Bible says, and I'm just going to read it here, because this is just to remind you about what happened last week, okay? Uh, let me find it. So... When the, when the chief priests and the elders, all the people, and there were a lot of people in the room, okay, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they're saying about you? But he gave no answer. The Lord Jesus was, was quiet. Imagine if you are in at school and your friends, the whole room is shouting and saying things about you that you've done. How would you guys react? Yeah. Would you just be quiet? Or would you try and say, no, I didn't do... Yeah, that's exactly right, Flory. You'd say, no, it wasn't me. I didn't do that. You know, you'd try and defend yourself. You'd be upset. And the Lord Jesus, um, he wasn't sat down, but he, he was just... He, he just stayed there, silent. He didn't, want to say, he didn't say anything. Okay? And so... Uh, Pontius Pilate had to make a decision. They were getting louder and louder. So, the, when the Passover happened, every year there was this tradition where they, they were, you know a prisoner, someone who's arrested, yeah? There comes a point when uh, the crowd get to choose to release, to set free a prisoner, okay? So imagine you, there's a prison, guys. And loads of people arrested in there. But uh, they, they had the choice to, to let someone who was arrested, they could go away free. And Pilate said, who do you want me to release? And on one side of the room was the Lord Jesus, who was being quiet. Okay. And on the other side, there was a man called Barabbas. Now, I want to tell you about this man, Barabbas. Okay. Let's try to say his name, Barabbas. Barabbas. Try and say it, Flora. Barabbas. Barabbas. Flora. Let's try and say it. Barabbas. <laughs> Barabbas. Never mind. Okay. Barabbas. So, this man, guys, this man Barabbas, he was a murderer. He killed people. He was a robber, so we believe. And he basically got people around him to do bad things. Okay, he got people around him to do bad things. He was a really bad apple. He was a bad person, kids. On one side there was Lord Jesus, who helped people, who healed people, who loved people. And on the other side, there was this man Barabbas. So, Pilate said, and he's the judge there, who do you want me to release? The Lord Jesus or Barabbas? Who would you get let free? Anna. Who would you choose? The Lord Jesus. Why? Because? He was powerful and he did nothing bad. Because he did nothing wrong. And who didn't? 
Tell, tell me, kids, one thing that the Lord Jesus did in the Bible that was wrong. We don't read anywhere. And here he was, and again, people were shouting, okay? So I want, uh, I want you all to realize that everyone was shouting. And, they, and this man, the Lord Jesus, he was just silent. And on this side was Barabbas, who had killed people, who had uh, done things wrong, who had stolen things, okay? And Pilate, this man, he was actually getting a bit stressed now, and he was thinking, oh dear, what do I do? And you know why, kids, as well? He didn't see anything wrong with the Lord Jesus. And his wife, okay, Pilate's wife, had said to him, whatever happens today, don't have anything to do with this righteous man. That's what she said. What does righteous mean? What do you think it means? I know it's a big word, but what does righteous mean? Do you think it's bad or good? Good, yeah. Right is good and wrong is bad, okay? Righteous, so he, the Lord Jesus was righteous. And his wife said to him, whatever happens today, don't have anything to do with this man because I've not been able to sleep. She was having bad dreams because of this, all this that was happening. And she had a bad feeling about it and she didn't want Pilate, her husband, who had to make the decision to do anything to do with the Lord Jesus. So she said to him, basically, uh, you know, he is a good man, so don't make the wrong decision. So Pilate had all this, this worry on his mind and he had to make a decision. They brought the Lord Jesus to him and he was there before them and, and on one side he had the Lord Jesus and on the other side he had the chance to set somebody free who, who was wrong, who was a bad person and he didn't know what to do. Imagine kids, I, I don't know what, it must have been very hard for him, but two other men had already done the wrong thing. Judas had betrayed the Lord Jesus and he didn't have to do that. Peter denied the Lord Jesus, he didn't have to do that. And Pilate, he had the chance to do the right thing. And what do you think that he does? Well, we're going to find out. So, they said, who do you want me to set free? What, what do you think they said? And they, they, what they did, kids, they started to shout really loud. Now, what do you guys hear, everybody, Hannah, say, repeat after me, Barabbas. Come on. Just you, Hannah. Barabbas. Right, everybody shout, Barabbas! 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 What's going on? <laughs> right, everybody, one, two, three, Barabbas! Barabbas! That's what they were saying, so the pilot said again, Who do you want me to set free, the Lord Jesus or Barabbas? Barabbas. Who? Barabbas! Barabbas! No one was shouting for the Lord Jesus, no one was defending him. He was on his own, this whole room was shouting against him, and they wanted a murderer to be set free. Can you imagine that? And then the Lord Jesus said, well, what has this man done wrong? What do I do with him? What do I do with him? Well, what's he done wrong? And you know what they did? The rappers, they shouted even more, kids. That just made them shout even more. And the Bible said they were jealous of the Lord Jesus. These men around him, people who had authority, like the Prime Minister, people who had responsibility, they were so jealous that they got angry and angry and they wanted to shout more and more, we want Barabbas to be set free, someone who was a murderer. Okay, so we see here, these men have done something wrong and then Pilate had to then decide and he was getting really stressed at this point. Okay, he was getting really stressed because he really didn't want to kill the Lord Jesus. I really believe that. He, he actually didn't want to even make the decision because he, he was getting, he was a coward. He was a coward. He didn't want to do the right thing. Even though his wife had warned him, he asked them what has he done wrong. They couldn't say anything. They couldn't accuse him of anything. All they did was shout, let this man go. And then, and then, he, and then he said to them, you know, who do you want me to crucify? Who do you want me to kill? Barabbas or the Lord Jesus? And then they said, Crucify him! They would shout and they shout to everybody. Shout Crucify him! him. Crucify <laughs> him! <laughs> and, that, and kids, I know if we can't really do it in this room, but they basically were shouting and shouting and shouting. 
that we want to kill the Lord Jesus. And it's not a very nice thing to think about. Well, that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to crucify him. And so Pontius Pilate, this man, okay, he had to, he gave the people, the crowds, the choice. All the people, they had the choice. This man or this man. And he was getting so, so stressed and so worried. He said, right, I've had enough. I've had enough of everything that you guys are saying. And what he did was, he had, he got this bowl of water, okay? He got a bowl of water and he washed his hands of it, like that. He literally did that, please. okay? He got this bowl of water and he washed his hands. And why do you think that he did that? Yeah. Well, he was stressed and basically, he had the responsibility, it was his job to decide what was going to happen with that man or with that man. And he basically said, you know what, this is me deciding, I, I don't want anything to do with it, it's not my decision. So he basically washed his hands of the decision. So the decision to choose this man or that man, he left, he, he didn't want to decide it anymore. It's like a judge or someone really important saying, I don't want to decide, you guys decide. He basically said, I, right, you guys, it's up to you, you do what you want, I'm leaving. And that's what he did. And he, he basically, he washed his hands of the whole affair and he left the decision with the crowds. And basically, what did they want? They wanted to crucify the Lord Jesus. So the Lord Jesus was taken out of the palace, he was taken out, arrested, and he was put in the hands of the soldiers, okay? And the soldiers, basically, they did some really horrible things, and Mark is going to just come here for a minute, and he's going to show what happened. So basically, the soldiers, who agreed, basically, with what the crowds were all doing, this is what they did. They, they put, what the Bible said is, a scarlet robe on the Lord Jesus, this. Now, scarlet in the Bible is a, a red colour, okay? So, just so you know, scarlet means like a, a tone of red, okay? And they, so it, it looks quite important now, Mark, doesn't it? They put, they put a robe on him, okay? Like he was a king. And they gave Mark, well, they gave the Lord Jesus a reed to hold, and basically, what, what does a king sometimes have, or someone important? They have a staff. Yeah? A crown. A crown, yes, they have a crown. But the queen, you know, the queen, she has a scepter. She has this really impressive scepter. Like, she has quite a few things, but basically, like, something to show her authority. And they didn't give the Lord Jesus anything made out of gold. They were mocking, they were laughing at him. They gave him just a reed, a piece of, like, a stick like this. And 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 uh, and the robe, and they also gave. Well, they put on the Lord Jesus a crown. And you're right, Hannah. But it wasn't like the crowns like you guys see maybe in a film or learn about at school. What are these? Can anyone tell me? You have them in the garden. Yeah, I want, you, I want you to look at this. It's like a bramble, but have you ever touched anything like this at, by accident, Hannah? Have you ever hurt your hands on it, maybe? What are these called here? Spike, yeah, like thorns, yeah? Have you ever hurt your hand on it? I did loads as a kid, yeah. Because I used to go up and play in the woods all the time and I'd constantly hurt my feet, my hands, my legs. I'd get scratched. If you're running or you don't see it and you put your hand, it'll scratch you and it'll hurt you. Have you seen these hands before at home? So, no. no. Right, well, you know, I'm going to ask Callum to touch it. What do you think about that, Callum? Yeah. I'm, I'm struggling just to hold it, in fact, kids, here in front of you, because I asked Sammy to get me at some point and I didn't, I didn't expect something so strong as this. But, like, look, there's thorns all over it, and you know what they did? They got some thorns, and I can't do it kids, because it will hurt my hands, but they got a load of thorns and they twisted it all together. They got the, all the thorns and they twisted the thorns until they made like a, a, a crown. 
something that, um, something round basically, I would assume. And they twisted it all and they, they put it on the Lord Jesus' head and they crushed it onto his head. I want you to, guys to understand what they did to the Lord Jesus. They got the crowns and they, they didn't just put it on the head, they pushed it down on the head of the Lord Jesus. And then you know what they did? Just to make it even worse, they, you see that, that's the thorn there, kids. And that's just one, and that went in my skin. But they got the thorns and they, they pushed it down on the Lord Jesus' head. And they all mocked him and they bowed down to him like this. And they, they pretended that he was their king. But they were just joking at him because they, they were laughing at the Lord Jesus. He, they laughed because they thought, he's got no power here. He, where's his friends? He's on his own. He's not saying anything. They were just basically jeering and mocking him, laughing at him. Look at him. Look at that reed in his hands and, and that robe and that crown of thorns. They were just laughing and mocking the Lord Jesus. And it was so sad. Look at everything that he's gone through, kids. And he's now, even the crowds are rejecting him. The soldiers are rejecting him. The Pontius Pilate had rejected him. The disciples weren't there. His family weren't there. The Lord Jesus was on his own. And it was all for a reason, kids. And we, we're going to find out fully what that reason was next week, actually. I'm not going to go into that. But the Lord Jesus went through all of this. And without going into what happens next week, I want you to understand that the Lord Jesus went through all of this for you guys and for me. And that's why I want you to, and, and then the Lord Jesus was led away. You know, the Lord Jesus, all along, at every step of his journey along this road, he knew that he was going to have to go through all this. He knew that he was going to have a crown of thorns. He knew that he'd have to go through all of that and not say a word and just be silent. He knew that he'd have to go through all of this. And he did it because he loves you guys. He loves me. And he, wants to, he wanted to save the people from their sins. He wanted to save the people from all the things that they were done, doing wrong. Even though he didn't deserve anything that he went through, he knew that he, he was the only one that could go through everything that he was going through. So what happens next? Anyway, so he was mocked. They shouted and they knelt before him just like I did. And they, and they shouted, Hail, King of the Jews! They were basically mocking or laughing at the Lord Jesus, calling him a king, the king of the Jews. And they, they didn't just do that, they spat on him, they gave him the reed, and they, they struck the Lord Jesus on the head with it like that. They hit him on the head, I'm not going to hit Mark, but um, they hit him on the head with it. And when they had mocked him, they took off his robe. The Lord Jesus didn't stay with that robe, okay? They took off the robe and put his own clothes back on him. They probably took this away as well. They took off the Lord Jesus' robe, they put his clothes back on the Lord Jesus and led him away to crucify him. And that's what the Bible says, and that's why I'm going to finish this. They took off his robe, they'd finished basically laughing at him, they took it off, and then they led him away to crucify him and to kill him. And that's what we're gonna find out next week, kids. Okay, okay so uh, maybe if we have the songs up again, do one more song. I know a man different to other men, unmarked by sin, untouched by Adam's fall, holy and pure, spotless humanity. His name is Jesus the Lord. Jesus, a wonderful name. Jesus the Lord Jesus so oh,